Hey, my fellow travelers. Welcome back. I'm Mark, and today we're going to talk about some travel news, and there's some not some good news, lots of not good news, actually, if you're looking to go into Florida, um, if you've got your Disney plans for this week, and some other things. Strikes looking to happen in Italy this weekend. Next week, excuse me, the UK will be having some rail strikes. So we're going to talk about some of those fun things to get you caught up on some of the news of the day in travel. So I didn't see y'all last week. I apologize. I was in San Antonio for a conference, and uh, so I did not get a chance to do a live for you there. But I thought I'd give you some of the updates of what's going on. As of Wednesday, September 28th, just so you know, if you are looking to go to Disney World or any place in Orlando for the uh, amusement parks, they are all closed today, Wednesday and probably Thursday as well, uh, because of the hurricane that's going through Florida right now and it's hitting right now. So thoughts and prayers out to everybody that's in the path of the hurricane. But do know that a number of the theme parks will be closed. Bush Gardens is closed. They're closed Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Disney World is going to be closed Wednesday and Thursday. Universal, Wednesday and Thursday. You see a theme here. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday, Legoland also is closed. SeaWorld, Wednesday, Thursday. So uh, Kennedy Space Center closed Wednesday and 30. Icon Park closed Tuesday. And they said to come check back later. So if you're going to be doing anything in Florida... For the next, you know, this week, you want to you want to see how things go with this hurricane because there are airports that are closed too. If we look at airports that are closed for the day, um, there is see where they are. Um, I know Tampa Airport and Clearwater; those are both closed because they have an evacuation order uh, going on there, so they'll be closed. Miami is still open, but they're recommending that you uh, check with your um, with your airline. To see what's going on. Where's my other one? There's one I had that was that had all of them on there, and I've now lost it. I apologize. Um, so there was a number of them. Orlando was closed for I think this afternoon. Uh, a lot of them, Central Florida are closing this morning, or actually they closed yesterday evening, and they're not opening up during today. So do check on because one thing I have to tell you: if you're going to be flying anywhere in the southeast the next uh the next few days there's going to be a lot of cancellations i believe there's two thousand cancellations uh today uh for flights and also airlines are moving their planes to get them out of the way of the hurricane uh, i know for myself i was supposed to fly out and go to england uh this week uh however i know when i'll be flying flying through was supposed to fly through georgia through atlanta there's going to be the storm's going to be there then so i did not want to deal with the cancellation delay or anything so I took things in my own hand and actually canceled my flight, rescheduled it for another time. So that's one thing you got to look at. I know um, if you are someone that is going to be going to one of these places, what are going to be impacted or supposed to be impacted, you contact the airline directly, contact the hotel directly. They should be able to give you like credit so you can use it for another visit. Um, if not, Put it on all the social medias that you're trying not to go to a hurricane destination and they're tr they're making you pay because this is one of those things you can shame uh the businesses to to help you out um because that's a pretty it's a pretty serious thing going on so be safe anybody that's heading that way but just want to give you the heads up on some of the hurricane things also that will impact there are a number of cruise cruises that have been canceled this for that their departures have been canceled norwegian and other places have canceled them so if you have a cruise that's leaving out of florida the next week or so Make sure you're checking to see, check your email, check your spam inbox to see what's there for you, okay, in case there's more information. Now, um, in happier news, I guess we can look at for, for, let's think of happier flying places internationally that might have uh, better things. Scotch Cheap Tickets announced their, their best international uh, deal kind of airports in the U.S. And JFK, Washington, Dulles, and Chicago O'Hare came in the top three we're finding really good last minute deals and good deals overall uh, flying internationally, which is really cool. Uh, so if you're anybody in any of those airports, make sure you check and sign up for some of the announcements for deals. On um, There's numerous websites that do that, not just Scott's, but a lot of them that are out there that can give you a chance to find that last minute deal or sometimes say, hey, there's a deal a few months out that you can grab. OK, so that's one thing to take care of. And that's why it's kind of important. Whenever you're signing up for any of those mileage programs, you might want to click on the send me deals and information because sometimes they'll send one out. Like Jocelyn found one. It was like 148,000 miles to fly Delta One to England, you know, or Ireland. And she's like, oh, my gosh, like that's usually like a you know economy ticket. And so she ended up looking 
And instead of using her miles, she ended up just buying a ticket because only $400. So she found another deal for those dates. So it's really a, a good idea to keep yourself abreast of any offers that are out there. So you can might be able to take that, take that thing going on. Now, one thing, Johnson was very lucky. Uh, she just got back from two weeks in England and Ireland. And my trip to England obviously got postponed because of the hurricane. Um, but one thing that is uh, if you're going to be in the UK this next week, do be aware there are going to be multiple, multiple rail strikes and multiple unions. Some days are going to be worse than others. I think it's this coming Saturday, October 1st, and then Wednesday, October 5th, and then next Saturday, October 8th. So if you're going to England, do not plan on using the trains those days, okay? Get the buses or travel the day before or the day after because there's going to be massive strikes that are going to be going on. So do be aware of that. All right. And in other information, other news you might want to know um, in Italy this Saturday, uh, there are strikes that will be impacting Ryanair and Vueling flights. So if you're going to be flying with Ryanair or Vueling this Saturday into or out of Italy, your plane, may, your schedule might be impacted. So I just want to give you the heads up for that. Trying to find some good news. <laughs> there was good deals. We sent some good deals. So I got the rail strike. We got the hurricane and its impact on the airports. A um, lot of things there with the, a uh, lot of things with that one going on. Um, another thing is to give more bad news to our UK friends. So for those who don't know, um, midterm holidays is uh, in October. So basically, you know, like we have like fall break and spring break in the US. Well, in the UK, they have a midterm break. And in their fall one is in October, and the ticket prices because the pound is very weak uh, compared to historically speaking, like the last few years. And with inflation going up and prices going up, this is actually going to be one of the most expensive uh, getaway times for a lot of families that are looking to fly out of the UK to get to places like Alicante and Spain and stuff. So just be just know if you are going to be flying and looking some last minute deals, there's probably not going to be too many going on for your fall holidays, sadly, or the half-term holidays, I should say. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'm, I'm trying to find some good news. Ah, here's some good news. So a lot of it's good news, but uh, recently the Bi uh, President Biden uh, commented on Monday, do you want to do crackdown on hidden fees, you know, on airline tickets? And this is one thing that the, this isn't a political thing, it's just saying, hey, you know, the board, the, the, Secretary of Transportation, they came out with their, the Department of Transportation came with their website to help people and help flyers know what airlines are promising, right? So we talked about this before in a few of these. So now that's out there, but they're also going to let's find ways to help pass passengers some more. And so President Biden said, hey, you know, the, the hidden fees and we want more transparency. And not all the airlines were really happy about that. Say, hey, we were already transparent, but this is reminds me of, I don't know, five, 10 years, well, maybe 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Uh, when Ryanair and some of the other, I don't know it was just Ryanair, there was a lot of airlines that would advertise really low prices and say, oh, we'll fly to France for a euro or fly to France for a pound. And then you buy the your tickets with one pound there, one pound back, and then it would be 75 euros. You're like, what? It's like, oh, because the fees and the taxes and, and all this kind of stuff. And like, wait a minute, that's not really fair because the ticket, yeah, the ticket was one euro, but then the fees make it another 25, 30 euros. This is one of those things that I think we're seeing. There was a lot of pressure in the European Union to do something about that, and they did. And now they have to announce the prices with the taxes included. You know, for example, uh, when I was switching my ticket to fly to England, the actual price of my ticket was three hundred dollars. The fees and taxes was five hundred and like sixteen. So it's an eight hundred dollar flight, right? Um, I'm flying to Canada here in a, you know, in a couple of weeks, and to fly to Canada. The ticket was six hundred dollars to Canada. Not to, you know, to Canada was six hundred dollars, but it was only one hundred and fifteen dollars in fees. Now the thing is, is if you look at it, the cost of the ticket. Well, yeah, I could say that a flight to England is only three hundred euros or three hundred dollars. Well, actually, one hundred and fifty dollars because only one hundred fifty each way. These kind of things people don't like, and that's where there was a lot of pressure. So the European Union said, "Look, you gotta you gotta let them know all the costs that are in there. You can't try to bait and switch them or." or make them feel that there's going to be a, a different, a cheaper price than they're actually going to pay. And so now you have that pressure from the, the U.S. Uh, government on airlines saying, hey, we want more transparency. Don't be hiding any fees and stuff, just so people know. And I think this is one thing is if you have the administration now talking about that with airlines, I could see it where you start to see some pressure on 
places like Airbnb eventually or VRBO, where they have the, yeah, it's $100 a night, but you have a $300 cleaning deposit that they don't put on there until the end. I think this could be where you're going to see some impact. So this is one of those things. You talking to your local representatives and saying, hey, I don't like these deals. I want more transparency. I don't like paying these fees and then having to clean the whole house for them. These things actually can make some movement uh, out there. So kind of an interesting thing to look at. So uh, something to something to look forward to, hopefully, a little more transparency in our in our planes. Um, some other good news. Uh, there's more and more countries are trying to lure in digital nomads with digital nomad visas. I know Costa Rica's got one coming up. Spain just announced they might have one for a five. They'll let you stay up to five years. But of course, you have to have a digital nomad job that lets you do that. But this is one of those things if you're looking. And, and this is one thing I think is important. Digital, excuse me, digital nomad lifestyle is not just for, you know, young 20-somethings who just want to sit by the pool or, or sit in a van. No, no, no. This is people of all ages. Think about it. You retire, you take a, a digital nomad job. You could be, instead of retiring down in Florida, you could retire in Spain or Australia and keep working while you're there to supplement your income. So this is one thing I think you need to realize is don't be digital digital nomads because they come in all shapes, sizes, ages, and incomes and all kinds of things. And then my last news I want to bring up is good news. Canada, Japan, and Hong Kong are among some of the travel de destinations that are ending their COVID travel restrictions. I actually uh, just bought tickets for Canada and I actually am going to be taking the training Canada and they just had their thing. They changed their website saying from October 1st, you know, you're, you're not required to have your mask when you're flying. Or sorry, not required to have your mask on the plane. Not the plane, the train, because it's the rail system. So they had a big prominent thing on there. So it is kind of interesting to see. There are more and more things are coming down. So that's nice. Um, let's see. Canada got the party started by announcing yesterday that it's lifting its vaccine requirement to enter the country. Its final COVID-related border restrictions on October 1st. Um, also, Japan said last week it would end its 50,000 daily visitor cap in uh, starting October 11th, so more people can go there. Hong Kong scrapped its quarantine at a hotel the second you get here policy yesterday or a couple days ago when this article came out. So things are moving to let people start traveling more on their own again and be more independent travelers. So lots of things, lots of news out there. I just want to kind of go through some stuff. I know most of it was based on the hurricane going through, and I think probably next week's video might have something to do that too though next week's video uh i don't know if we have a live tomorrow i might or next week i might pre-film that one and just have it come up so you have the news i'm just trying different ways to kind of figure things out because in the fall there's usually not a lot of travel news out there so sometimes it's just like i would have like two things to say and i have to search for something so just want to kind of give you a little background of what's going on so we're going to try some new stuff Anyway, I see there's a lot of people on. They've written and said, hey, so uh, welcome, everybody. I yeah, good to see Jim and Harriet from uh, Costa's World of Music Memories. Italian Renaissance, American Renaissance. Hi, Mark. Have you ever taught English abroad? I'm about to start in Italy. That's awesome. Um, I have taught English abroad. I've actually taught abroad at universities and uh, colleges for business courses mostly. Um, English, I've done some, like, private teaching and stuff uh, for English. I think uh, it is a good way. There are some countries that really make it easy for you to go. Um, if you're looking for some, I know a lot of, I know a lot, actually a lot of travel bloggers that started as they were teaching English in South Korea. And then from there, they started exploring Southeast Asia and East Asia, and they kind of got their travel bug going. So that's one of the things that's really nice. Um, if you are going to teach English abroad, one thing I would say is always get your TOEFL or your TEFL certificate or TOEFL certificate teaching English as a foreign language certificate, just so you have proof that you can teach because just because you speak the language doesn't mean you can teach. So it's always good to have kind of a, a set curriculum. So if you're going to go work at some place, ask them what their curriculum is. Also, there in the past, I don't know how it is now, but in the past there was there were some nefarious characters that would hire people to teach English and you'd come and then they wouldn't pay you very much. Or they would pay you what they promised and you're kind of stuck. So make sure you always have a little bit of extra background money just in case things go sideways. Let's see. Uh, Steven asks, did you ever get burned out of traveling? I took my revenge trip to Germany for nearly a month, but I'm at the end, really glad to be home. So occasionally I will get a little tired. Um, like I'm looking at my trip for next summer and I might be gone for eight weeks to 10 weeks, depending when, well, it, it's right now it's 10. Um, 
but it might be less because I'm like, ah, so I'm trying to figure out how that works. I mean, getting burned out does happen. That's one of the things that's really helped us with not burning out from all the travel we do is to plan do nothing days. Um, so like if we're going to do, you know, a two week trip or a 10 day trip, I know somewhere in the middle, we're going to have a kids. You can sit home and watch Netflix. That's fine. Uh, you know, Joss will go do shopping. I will go look for like a comic book shop or just, you know, I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to go film some random videos today. I don't really care. Like we all are kind of like free for the day. We're not trying to see a church. We're not trying to catch a plane or a train. We're just whatever, man. And the thing is some people get upset. They're like, you're wasting that day. But here's the thing is by taking that day to relax and not get burned out, I'm enjoying the rest of my trip instead of getting burned out. And the last four or five days, you're kind of like, man you know, done for. Yeah. So there's something there. Uh, hey, Thomas Rising, Good to see you. Esther in New York. Good to see you, Lori. Always a pleasure. So it's me, Laura. Nice to see you as well. Off the beaten trap adventures. Good to see you too. Uh, Icon Park, whether there's a hurricane or not, people should go to that place. Yeah. That was actually one of the places on the list of the parks that I was reading through. I just didn't read on that one because I didn't know that one well enough. Maggie T just got back from Philly. What a great city. Plenty to do. And people was great. Yeah. That's one thing is I, I went to Philadelphia for the first time earlier this year and I was surprised how much I enjoyed it. Um, I know they get a bad rap because they're sports fans, but actually the city is fantastic. Plenty of stuff to do. Lots of culture, great museums, great food. Um, the people were cool too. So that was nice. Randolph. Good to see you again, my friend. It's been a little while. Yes. <laughs> Street vendors for water, one dollar cheap as I pay compared to four bucks at Franklin Gardens. Yeah, that that is one of the things when you're looking at street vendors. I mean, they can be a, very much a cheaper alternative. Um, the same thing if you're looking to, you know, looking for a snack or looking for lunch and don't want to break the budget. Sometimes grabbing that hot dog or that pretzel, you know, on the side of the street might be enough to keep you until you get to dinner time. So you're not spending twenty bucks at dinner, you're only spending or lunch, you're only spending like five bucks. So so there's that. Yep, Japan lifting it. That is awesome. Any tips on flying? Yeah, go for it. Just, you know, move your arms really fast. You'll take off. No. Uh, tips on flying. Uh, I I still, I, I always try to get the early morning flight just because there's delays or stuff. Since I'm the first flight of the day, there's less delays in the morning. The delays just add up as you go on through the day. So there is that. Yeah, Stuart's talking about the half-term pricing. He lives in the UK. Um, that It's kind of like, you know, in the US, when it's that week between Christmas and New Year's or Thanksgiving week, you know, that the prices are just stupid high because everybody's going at that time and they can charge what they want because they can. Supply and demand. So there's that. Oh, Baggy T talking about the West Midlands Metro. Also going on Stratton, England, 15th of October through the 4th of January. Wow. Wolfram Hamilton, Birmingham. Good to know. That might impact some of my travels. So this is what I'm trying to figure out myself. Jerry writes, how do you think the EU energy crisis will affect travel this winter? Travel to Strasbourg, Colmar, and Paris for Christmas markets in December. Those are the three best places to go in France for the Christmas markets. Good call. We actually have don'ts. I got a don'ts to Strasbourg. I got a don'ts to Colmar. Uh, Shocks to Strasbourg is coming out next month. Um, don'ts of Paris will be coming out for the holidays, probably right when you're going. So there'll be plenty of stuff there. We have mistakes of Paris already out there. We've got plenty of stuff to help you. Um, I think what you'll probably see for in December, you'll probably see less buildings lit up. Um, that will be one impact. I think where you're really going to start to see is when you start to get into the January, February times, and it, there's going to be people that I mean, won't be able to pay their bills because the energy prices are going to be re really high, like really high. So I think that's that's going to be an issue. Um, you might notice like your hotel might not give you control of your heating. And so instead of having it at a nice, like toasty 70 degrees, it might be at 65. Um, there will, I think there will be some impacts. Uh, it really all depends on how cold this winter is. Um, that That is one of those things. If it's not a very cold winter, then you, you, we should be okay. But it's a really cold winter. I think there could be some some problems. Linda writes, any tips on flying from O'Hare to Athens? I can find no direct flights and really short or long connection times. Thank you. Yeah, no. Athens is really not a place that's easy to get to from the U.S. Um, and the tickets you're going to buy if you're flying from New York or wherever, they're really high. What we do uh, when we go to Greece, we actually fly to Italy first. 
and then we spend some time in Italy. Then we take like an easy jet flight to Crete or Athens and do that. So we get a few days on both sides in Italy and then doing it that way. And literally, I mean, we'll get flights to Italy in the summer for like a thousand dollars versus like 1800 to Athens. And with 800 bucks for each person, we do a round trip ticket and it's like a hundred bucks on easy jet from Italy to, to Athens or Crete. And so we're saving 700 bucks per person. So 700 times four, $2,800 is a lot of money we're saving. Um, not doing that. So that would be something I would look into. <laughs> Visit any country the first time, anytime soon. Not, not this. I don't think this year uh, be, there won't be anything new this year, like for the rest of this year. Uh, next year we'll have a lot of new places. Uh, so there's that. Let's see. So Heather, hi Mark. Hey Heather, how are you? I'm flying from Halifax to London, May 2023. I'm trying to decide if I should go the use route of booking at the six month mark or should I wait? So many people saying conflicting things. So, you know, I've heard the same thing. Um, I'm looking at tickets for next year. The prices for next summer are starting. I, 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 I think the prices for next summer will be better than they were this last summer. Um, but I, I, I think there's still a lot of pressure coming up. But you're starting to see, like, Delta just announced. I forgot to talk about this one. Delta announced nine new uh, flights between the U.S. and Europe. So, like, Atlanta is going to have to Stuttgart and Edinburgh and Dortmund, I think. And then there's, like, from New York City, from um, they're going to have, from JFK, I think they're going to have uh, – to Gatwick and from LA, there's going to be a Gatwick flight or, well, there's going to be a London flight and a Paris flight. And so there's, there's more, more routes are coming back, which will alleviate some of the pressure at some of the major hubs um, and also give people more options for flying. But that we have, but those airline airports can handle that. That's another question. Um, what I always tell people when they're buying plane tickets, like if you go on a kayak or a sky scanner, they'll tell you what a good price is. Like they'll say, hey, this is a good time to buy, or maybe you should wait. They usually do a decent job of telling you that. Um, when I buy my tickets, I buy my tickets knowing, hey, look, I'm okay with this price. But here's the thing. Nowadays, when com com companies have their, you know, hey, you can change your ticket for free, or you just get the credit back. If you buy a ticket that's kind of expensive, and then you see it drops from like $1,400 to $800, turn in your ticket, get the credit, buy the new ticket. So then you get the cheaper ticket, and you get like 600 bucks of credit still. So that would be one thing you could think and think about, but it depends on the airline you're using. Like I could do that with Delta, but I don't know if I could do that with some other airlines. So something to think about. So Erica is heading to Paris for a month. Oh, tough life. That's a good life though. Uh, Mid-March to mid-April and stay in an Airbnb. Any advice on what not to forget to pack? You can get everything you want in Paris. It's not a problem, but honestly, um, I would take... Like Chaz has a video on this. Any feminine hygiene products that you like, uh, you might not be able to find them there. Like you can find those type of products there, but you might not find tampons with applicators. You know, so these are things you might want to think about. Um, any of your medicine you like to take, I, I would definitely have that. Fingernail clippers actually hard to find sometimes, especially ones that you like to use. So there is that. Oh, Nancy, I'm so jealous. I wish I was there too. It's like it was like. 40 degrees this morning, not, not the Celsius, the Fahrenheit this morning where I am here in Illinois. So, uh, yeah. Esther had some day trips up the Hudson Valley around Terraton, a sleepy hollow, hiking pass, lots of historic sites. Plus, I beat the Halloween crowd by going in mid-September. That is true. Uh, we were in sleepy hollow. Uh, it, man, it's probably been 10 years now. No. Nine. Eight, eight years ago. It's been eight years since we were in sleep. Like we stopped. We actually went to Sleepy Hollow to go to Sleepy Hollow. Actually found a good Greek restaurant there. Uh, so yeah, sometimes if this is one of those things. Sometimes if there's a place to get super packed for a, su a certain festival. If you're not really wanting to go to the festival, you can enjoy the city anytime. Like I, I will like I've gone to a number of cities before like an Olympics or World Cup come so I can film video so it's ready beforehand. And what's cool is like people are getting things ready so things are cleaned up and more available before the big crowds come. And then you kind of get to enjoy it. And then when the crowds are there and the TV is there, you're like, oh, I remember when I was there. Like we had a really good time going to Rio before the Rio Olympics. 
And then when the Olympics were there, which showed the kids, hey, remember, there's our hotel, there's our stuff. So that was really kind of cool. So, so it's me, Laura. Do you have any thoughts, recommendations on guided tours agencies? So, do you mean like via tour? Like, if you, if, here's what I'm gonna say a guided tour is extremely helpful if it's a place you really wanna know a lot about. If, if you're like, I just wanna walk around and explore, and you're not really into like learning in depth stuff, it might not be worth the money. Um, but I always tell you, if you're gonna stay someplace for a while, like if you're gonna move to a new city, it is worth it to get like the full day guided tour telling you all this kind of stuff. So then you get more background on that city. Um, or like when I'll go, like when I go take my students places, we usually stay a week in each just like we go for like four weeks, we stay in like a week to ten days in each spot. I'm like, no, we're getting a guided tour the first day, so everyone's familiar with the city, know what's going on. So I, I tend to like those uh, to give people a good background if you want to know background. So that's that's kind of more that. Is O'Hare a bad airport for delays, specifically in the winter? It's always bad. I, I, just, I don't like O'Hare anymore. Uh, I've, I've slept too many nights because of snow in the O'Hare airport, and my back still hates me, and it probably has been 15 years since I had to do that. Yeah. Esther's getting her, her exchange, getting her money now. Yeah, my parents are in Canada right now. My mom's like, I got some Canadian money for you because it's too good. I'm like, I'm going like two weeks after you go. <laughs> it shouldn't be too bad, but it was pretty funny. Mariella, good to see you. Have you ever traveled in the stand country? So that was one another trip that got kind of smushed because of COVID. I don't know when we're going to be back that direction. Um, a few years ago, I think it was 2018, 19, the stands countries all put a bunch of money in to get a bunch of influencers to go there. So you look back at like 2019 or 18, there's a bunch of videos that came out, but only like one, because they only paid for one video uh, for all these different influencers to go do like a highlight tour and then make a video about the country. Um, so, but I, because they reached out to me too, and I was like, it doesn't fit my schedule. So I couldn't do it, but there's that. Steven, have you been to Greenland? Um, the best way to go to Greenland is just a quick flight from Reykjavik. You can do a day trip over there. Um, I'm kind of beating myself up that I didn't do that um, when we were there because I was like, ah, we should have done that. It would have been kind of cool. So bag of tea. Would five days in Chicago be too much as a first timer? Or would you recommend having a day trip out of the city? I did four days in Philly with one in New York City via Amtrak and I broke the week up. Uh, yeah, that's five days is plenty. Um, you can go up to, uh, you can go up to Milwaukee, go to Milwaukee for the day. There's the train goes straight up there. You'll be fine. That's why I kind of like ask. Oh, Philippe is in Paris hanging out with one of his buddies. I saw, uh, on social media. I hope you're here doing, having a good time, my friend. Uh, the pictures look like you have a good trip. So that's good to see. And so, uh, Yeah. But I just want to give you all kind of like some of the latest news. And, well, mostly it was hurricane stuff, but uh, just want to give you some news for travel for the day. And I hope you all uh, learned a bit. Thank you for all the questions and comments. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, next week, next week, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to, once, once I know all the things that have happened with the hurricane that I can put some together, I might just put out a, a news reel uh, next week um, because we have other things going on. But we might have a surprise extra video next week for you um, about some travel stuff. So uh, so there is that. Philippe, I was in Sofia four days a couple weeks ago and hired a personal guy for the first full day. Not only was it informative, but I got a good overview of the city that I wanted to go back to. Yeah, that, that's one of the best reasons to do it. You get that good overview, you understand. And a lot of times they'll tell you like good place to eat or local food to have, which is always a, a bonus to have. You know, that's why I always talk, if I get guys, I always talk to them. If I have taxi drivers, that's why I like, I like taxi over over Uber to learn because taxi drivers have to know the city because they have to know it. Um, whereas Uber, you're, 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 you know, their, their app tells them where to go. So they don't always know where they are. And so if you're especially in, in big cities, it's a lot of people that just move there. They're the ones that are doing it. And so they don't know. They're just following this. You're like, dude, it's right there. Can we turn left? No, it tells me to go nine more blocks this way than around. Like, <sighs> But taxis will be like, oh, yeah, man, you dude, just hop out here, walk a block that way. You'll save yourself 20 minutes. 
Also, um, grab, you know, Mike's Deli is halfway down the street on the left side. You know, those kind of things is really kind of cool. Hello, Liz. Good to see you. I'm about to hop off, though, but I appreciate you hopping on to say hi. Hey, if y'all can hit the like button before you go, that'd be very nice of you. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, Steven is asking maybe what to do if you're caught in a weather situation while traveling. Yes, that, that is one of the things. We've been caught in hurricanes before. Um, we've actually been about to board a plane and literally walked out of the airport and said, canceled our flights because, like, not taking a chance of flying. That That's why one of the reasons why I was like, look, I don't want to be in the way flying into Atlanta when people are trying to get back home or other things are going there. So that that's kind of a, a thing to worry about and kind of think about when you are traveling. That's why it's always kind of uh, hit and miss when you try to travel in the southeast in the fall in the U.S. and the Caribbean because you never know when a hurricane is going to come through. That's why places like Aruba are pretty popular all year round because Aruba is so far south. It doesn't really get in that kind of hurricane lane, I guess you'd say. Uh, so that could be something to kind of think about. Anyway, Liz, Mary Ellen says, hey. Anyway, I just want to get on, do our thing. I'm just trying to figure out more stuff on here. Oh, I, I'd like, actually, I could ask you all. Um, I did a flight review. I posted yesterday here on Walter's World Shorts about a flight I took from Helsinki to Vilnius on a little prop plane. Um, I have a review of the a small airport coming in a couple weeks. I've got a review of a couple hotels. And if there's things you like want to know about like things you like in reviews for flights, for airports, for hotels, please let me know. Um, so I have a better idea of what to kind of put in there for more information. And it might not be stuff that I would actually talk about, but something I could put in like, oh, here, like, I just have, like, a scroll going over the top. Here are the destinations for this airport or whatever, what airlines fly through there. So I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do things because the Shorts channel, yes, it'll have the vertical videos, but it's going to have more ex experimental stuff, you know, our experimental days. Um, like, we'll have the reviews for the those things. Also, review for travel products will be on here because those don't really work on Walter's World. Um, so we want to kind of work on some of those things. So... Any, any advice is always helpful. Oh, yeah. Folks got hit with a hurricane in Nova Scotia. Yeah, my, my parents are getting – they're in Canada right now. They're getting the remnants of that. They're like, it's pouring down rain every day. Man. Sorry. It's like I, I can't control the weather. Let's throw that. Uh, customer service, always good to know. Yeah, okay. Ooh, 48 days, Lewis. Nice, nice. I will tell you right now what day it's scheduled for. Do, 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 do. The Bloomington Central Illinois Regional Airport review is scheduled for October 11th. That's a Tuesday. I can tell you, free parking's nice. And if the little minibus sees you, they'll come pick you up. It takes about five minutes to check in. About five minutes to go through security. Super nice people. There's a bar upstairs that has limited food options where there's like burgers and muffins and stuff. There's a shop that actually has stuff in it. And if you ever want to get any beer nuts or beer nuts apparel, they have that there too. So that should help you out a little bit, um, Thomas. So but that review will be coming out. So anyway, you can always send me a message to Thomas. So I'll give you the heads up. Jack. Well, I'll answer Jack's question, then I'll, then I'll, then I'll have to head off. So, hey, what's up from England? Good to see you. I was supposed to be there on Saturday, but hurricanes don't let us go this weekend. So my question is, can you enjoy Nordic countries such as Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, and Iceland if you don't like fish food? Yes, you can. The herring stuff that you see, that is a thing, but you don't have to have it. Okay? Like, I, I lived in Finland for a year I've visited Norway a number of times, Sweden a number of times, Denmark a number of times. None of them have like, like outstanding food. Actually, if you go to our Walter's World Eats channel, we actually have an Eats of Finland video that will talk about that. And on the normal Walter's World channel, we have an Eats of Sweden video that can help you with that. But um, 
Meatballs, which sounds funny, is always good. I know salmon is not something you're looking for, but they're actually some decent food. But what I find really good about Nordic cuisine is they know their food isn't really famous and really that great. So they take their international food pretty seriously. So you can eat pretty well uh, other types of foods, you know. So sometimes it's hard. Like I tell people when they go to Helsinki, it's hard to find Finnish food. But you go to Turku, which is, a you know, the second city or third, third largest city, they're a second largest city, old capital. Then you can find a lot of traditional Finnish food, which is nice. Um, but yeah, no, I, I have a good time eating, eating up there. But I'm, you know, meat and potatoes kind of guy. So it works well. Oh. Meal and snack options for flight reviews, maybe. Okay. So that's why I have my my, my flight review for the Vilnius or the Helsinki to Vilnius. It was just blueberry juice or water. It's like, ooh, blueberry juice. I'm so I, I'm trying to think because I have uh, I have a train ride in Canada that I'm going to be on. It's a five hour train ride, and food is included. They give you like ten different options. They actually have one that's called the bland menu. And there's like the vegan option, and it, or it's bland option. There's like bland option, vegan option, uh, halal option, gluten free option. I mean, there's a lot of them on there, but it was kind of cracked me up with a like bland option. <laughs> like, wow. Plain toast and some butter, unsalted. <laughs> so, oh man, the friends of mine are in Turku on business for the next four to five weeks. I have a don'ts of Turku video, Mary Ellen, and an eats of Finland video, and cheap eats of Finland video. Um, I got a bunch of Finland stuff, Mary Ellen. If they need some some insights, I used to live in Turku. I was an exchange student there as a kid. So, Let's see, yes, get the seconds on the blueberry juice. Because it really is good. Your friends there that you'll see blueberry pie, which looks more like a blueberry crumble cake kind of stuff. It's actually really good there in Finland. So anyway, I will leave you all with this. Um, thank you for hopping on. We'll have more news next week. Hopefully good travel news. No hurricanes or crazy weather stuff to ruin people's travels. Um, anyway, I wish you all the best. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Bye.